Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at some quick tips that will make life easier on you when using Excel. So very often you're not able to change the format of the spreadsheet itself because someone else is using it or there's some other limitation, but you want to change at least the way it looks to you. Okay. So what you can do is there are certain features that don't modify the data, but simply changes the way you view the data. So let's take a look at that. So say in column A, you have customer names and you're trying to line it up with something that's off the screen because there are many, many columns in this spreadsheet. So say way over here in AJ, you have total sales. And what you really want to do is you want to see these numbers but you don't want to have to keep going back and forth or highlighting to see which name lines up to which amount. But again, for some reason, you're not allowed to change or not able to change the format of the spreadsheet. What you can do is you can do what's known as freeze panes. And by freezing the pane, it doesn't actually change the structure. It just changes how the information is viewed. Now, using uh, freeze panes is easy. It's just this one little thing that you need to know about it. And that is placement of the cursor. So what freezing pane does is that say you freeze column A, all the other columns will scroll off. They won't be gone. You just won't see them. And then it'll allow you to line up one column with another. So here's where it is. If you go up to view, there's already a button conveniently here for freeze panes. And when you click on the down arrow, freeze pane is here. But before you do that, you need to position your cursor. So say you want the top row to not scroll off the screen and you want the left column to not scroll off. You need to place the cell there. In other words, the cell is the demarcation point. You're saying starting here, everything below this and everything to the right of this will not be frozen. Everything to the left of this and everything above this will be frozen. So in other words, this is above and this is to the left. That will all be frozen. So watch what happens. Freeze panes, freeze panes. Just like I said, there's that line there and there's that line there. So if you scroll over, now you can line up total sales with the customer that the sale is in line with. And we don't have really any examples, but the same thing happens. You can scroll up. Now, in this case, the customer name will uh, scroll off, but if you have titles up here, they won't scroll off. So here you can still see total sales. And if there's any values down here, you'd be able to see that. Because in that case, you're really lining up a column with the value. So Depending on how the spreadsheet is broken up, you might not even need that. So if you don't, let's look at how you would handle that. So go back to freeze panes and choose unfreeze. So like we said, maybe you don't care about the top titles. You could just click up here then. So since there's nothing above it, it's only what's to the left that will be frozen. Again, go to freeze panes and now you only have one line. So when I scroll over again, that column is frozen. Scroll down, now the top is not frozen. So we'll do one more version. We'll unfreeze panes. And maybe it's not customer name. Maybe it's customer first name. Customer last name. And we'll just do once so you don't have to see me typing in a bunch of uh, data. So in this case, you want to freeze column A and B. So again, you position the cell as the demarcation point that everything to the left and everything above it gets frozen. So go to freeze panes, freeze panes, and there you go. Once again, you see the lines, but now the line is at column B. So watch what happens when we scroll. There you go. 
So that's about it for freezing panes. And like I said, uh, you can just you can pretty much put the cell wherever you want, but I suspect there's only just so much information that you'd want to lock into play. So this is the most common that I can think of would be name, but there may be some other criteria that's important to you. So that's about it for freezing panes, and we'll go on to the next. Okay, so I cleared the freeze panels just so we don't get it confused with the other tasks that we'll be doing. So now let's look at conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, again, is another way of being able to view data without actually changing the structure or the layout. So let's go over to our uh, total sales column. Now, as you can see, I've got the values highlighted. What we're going to do is we're going to apply a rule to the entire column, and that rule is going to do various things to these numbers. So highlight the column by clicking on the top, and then in the Home tab, go to Conditional Formatting. And you can either create a new rule from scratch, which we'll do in a moment, or what you can do is you can use some of the pre-established ones. So let's go to Top Bottom. So let's look at top 10. Now we don't have 10 items, so we'll just bring that down to three. And the top three will make green fiddle with dark green. Click on OK. As you can see, the top three are now green. If you go back there, so it's still highlighted, go again to top bottom and choose bottom 10. And again, change this to three because we only want three since we have a small population. We can leave that as light fill, red fill. You can see now that those fill. What's important to note is, unlike manually coming up here and changing the color, this is recalculated over and over again. So if I add a new value to this column, what's going to happen is one of these will possibly change. So let's add a new low. Let's go down to 1,000. Watch what happens. The, actually we have a 1000, which is fine. The 3000 is going to no longer be red. See, because that's no longer one of the bottom three, this is one of the bottom three. So let's also add a new high. Let's add, well, I'll tell you what, it won't be the highest, whereas we went for the lowest there. Let's go to something in the middle, but it'll still be a new high in between. So let's do like 19,000, which is between 18 and 22. So there's 19. See, that one is no longer colored. So rather than manually coming up here and changing it, it's actually recalculating it for you. So as long as you apply it to the full column, it will continue to modify as values change. Now it's possible that the value in this column would change. Maybe this is a cumulative column. Maybe all these columns are like, sales day one, sales day two, sales day three, and as more days of sales are added in, this value may change. And so let's take a look at that contingency. Let's bump it up to 29. Suddenly it becomes green, and this one stops being green. So it, it's really a great way of highlighting data without actually, again, you're not really changing the format, you're just really changing how it appears to you. So in this case, conditional formatting is comparing one cell to another cell. And in, in, in this case, it's comparing it to all the other applied cells. Maybe you want to do something based on the cell itself. Maybe you're doing data validation and that there is a limitation to the length of uh, the value in a field. So like say a party name can only be a certain amount of characters long and you want to highlight that. You don't want to change it, but you want to know that there's an issue with it. So let's come over here back to customer name. So say there's an issue where you want only four characters. Anything, any name that has more than four characters is going to be a problem. Kind of silly, but I want to demonstrate how this works. So highlight the column, go to conditional formatting, and now we're going to actually go to new rule. Come all the way down here to the bottom, use a formula to determine what cells to format. In this case, what we're doing is we're not comparing the cells to each other, we're comparing the cell to an absolute value. So equals len, oops, equals len, 
Len is a standard statement used in various versions of BASIC as well as other languages to look at the length of a, a value. So in other words, how many characters long is it? So this one we're going to put in parentheses and we'll say A1 cell and then greater than 4. Click on format because un unlike the other ones, the, the uh, or should I say unlike the first example where it gave you a handful of formats, here you're actually making your own manually. And we'll just give this a blue background just so it's obvious. So if the length of the cell is greater than 4, make it blue. And there you go. Claire is greater than 4. Barry is greater than 4. Moira. Chris is 5, so that's fine. Ada is 3, so that's fine. And so there you go. Uh, so two different examples. One where you're comparing cells against each other. And one where you're comparing each cell against an absolute. So that's probably enough for conditional formatting. Uh, if you need more examples, just let me know, and we'll move on to the next lesson. Now let's talk about sort and filtering. It is easily accessible right up here. However, I'm going to leave the conditional formatting in place because you can actually sort and filter based on formatting. And so I kind of want to show you how some of these uh, functions combine with each other. So if you want to highlight just one column, you can do that and do sort and filtering and apply the filter. Once the filter is applied, you would need to remove the filters before changing what is and isn't filtered. So you could just come back up here and click on filter again. So if you want to filter the entire spreadsheet, you could just click up here in the upper left corner and then choose filter and now everything gets a filter. So when you have the filter apply, you click on the little arrow that appears, and as you can see, it will show you every single value that is available. But in addition to that, you can also filter by color. So for some reason, I want to just see the ones that we've applied that conditional formatting to. We can do that. So now you've seen how you're really combining functions. You, do con you can do conditional formatting, and then you filter based on that formatting. And uh, basically the functionality as far as uh, sorting A to Z, uh, you can clear the filter, you can do text filters as well. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory as far as is it equal, does it not equal, does it begin with? Uh, that's pretty straightforward. You can select just certain ones. So let's get rid of filter by color. So we can do clear filter. And then maybe you want to see just certain people. You can check uh, select all and apply you know just check the ones that you want and you see just those again you can click on select all um, maybe you want to see everyone except those two so you can do that so sorting and filtering is pretty straightforward uh, pretty uh, readily available I just want to demonstrate that you can combine uh, by having a uh, conditional formatting, you can also uh, filter on that. So you're really combining functions at that point. You're having conditional formatting and then filtering based on the format. So I think that's about it for this tutorial. I just wanted to cover those three quick tips. And if there's anything else you want to see, just let me know.